Hello and welcome to another episode of Making Stuff Look Good in Unity. Today's topic is palette swapping. The game's Downwell and Luff browsers both feature unlockable color palettes which, when selected, recolor every single sprite in the game. You could of course render out copies of every sprite in every required color, but the sheer volume of available color schemes in a game like Downwell suggests that maybe something a bit more clever is going on behind the scenes. So let's look at a few different ways we might dynamically recolor an entire game using shaders. Downwell uses at most four colors, so we'll design around a four color limit for now. Conveniently, the Game Boy also used a four color palette, so we'll demo our effect on some sprites from Game & Watch Gallery for the Game Boy. Yoshi and the environment use black, white, and two shades of gray. One way we could perform a simple palette swap is an image effect which looks at each pixel on the screen and compares its color to a target color. If the sampled color is equal to the target color, we'll return a new color instead. For a four color palette, we can define four in colors and four out colors. Let's see what that looks like in Shader. We'll need a bunch of color variables which we can set globally or per material. Then in our fragment function, we'll sample the texture and have four comparisons to our in colors that conditionally return the associated out color. Let's break down this line a little bit more. Comparing the RGB components of the source color to the RGB components of the in color actually returns a vector 3 where each component is either a 1 or a 0 if the piecewise comparison passed or not. The all function returns true if all the components of a vector are non-zero, so in our case, when all the red, green, and blue components of the two colors are equal. To complete our palette swap, we'll need a small image effect script. The script will just create a material from our shader, and in on render image, blit the source render texture to its destination with our material. And we'll also need a bunch of colors to be set in the material. Now we're all set up to swap out colors. We can use the eyedropper right from the scene to grab the input color, and then select the corresponding output color. This method lets us easily change colors on the fly, and for many cases this is an okay solution. But there are a few problems with it. First of all, it uses the equality comparer for floating point numbers, which because of floating point precision, might erroneously tell us two colors aren't equal even when we think they are. The second issue is one of performance. If statements or branches are typically very slow in shaders, especially when we branch based on a texture sample or interpolator, so our four branches aren't really the best idea for lower-end GPUs and mobile devices, and we definitely wouldn't want to be adding more of them for, say, an 8-color palette. So what can we do instead? Our sprites are currently designed with a grayscale palette like this, and we want to map them to another color palette like this. Grayscale colors can of course be encoded as a single value rather than individual RGB values. The values for this grayscale palette are at something like this. Now, if we had our swappable color palette set up as a texture, we could sample it using the grayscale value as the X position. Each unique grayscale value when treated as the X component of a texture coordinate will nicely map to our color palette texture. Let's see what this looks like in Shader. We can just grab the red component of the initial texture sample because we're dealing with a grayscale source texture, we expect all three color channels to be equal. Then we sample from our color palette texture, feeding in our grayscale value as the X value of the texture coordinate. Our image effect script becomes a lot more simple too only passing in a single texture instead of eight individual color values. Now, we can just pass in a texture that is literally four pixels wide and one pixel tall that encodes the four colors of our new palette. This method could be extended to support palette swapping for up to 256 different colors, which is way more than we'd need for most stylized pixel aesthetics. So we've gotten rid of ugly code and bad branching, but we've lost the ability to change colors at a granular level instead of having to pass in a texture every time. As well, we've taken on a new, more subtle performance hit, a dependent texture read. The GPU is going to do its damnedest to run your shader code in the most optimal way possible. Similar to how branching disturbs what the GPU can optimize and assume, sampling from a texture using any value other than the exact vector 2 from the vertex shader is bad news. Dependent texture reads aren't terrible for performance, and they're often the only way to achieve certain effects, but for our simple palette swap, we can do a little bit better. Instead of defining a second texture containing our swapped in palette, we'll instead use a 4D matrix and cram four colors into four vectors of the matrix. We can use this grayscale value to index into the matrix as if it were an array. Of course, our grayscale values aren't exactly the integers we want them to be, so we'll have to multiply by three. This makes some assumptions about the exact gray values being passed in. The darker gray needs to be a value just above one third, such that when it's multiplied by three in floored, it equals one. Same goes for the lighter shade of gray, only two-thirds. 
Typically, we'd worry about casting these floating point numbers to integers, but luckily the shader compiler will take care of this for us. Our image effect script will have to do a little bit more work now. We have to convert each color to a vector 4 and fill a 4x4 matrix with those vectors. You could of course optimize this even further by only rebuilding the matrix when a color actually changes, but the overhead here is pretty minimal. This third attempt at palette swapping gives us back granular control of the swapped colors, and it squeezes a little bit more performance out as well, which is always good, but it does introduce a 4 color limit. So there are three different ways you can do palette swapping on limited color scheme pixel art. They've all got their own pros and cons, which method suits your project will vary based on your needs and target platforms. Palette swapping has its place in many games as an unlockable aesthetic option, but if you get creative, you can find ways to use it as a gameplay mechanic too. As an extra challenge, try recreating this effect of selectively swapping the color palette in a circular area. The assets for this video are available on GitHub, clone them to your heart's content. Are you building a game using something you learned about here on making stuff look good? Show it to me! Share a short video, gif, or a link to a demo with me on Twitter. I'm thinking of starting a developer showcase, I'm not sure what form that will take on just yet, but hit me up on Twitter if you want to get in early. Shout out to my awesome patrons on Patreon, thank you for your amazing support. And as always, thank you all for watching, keep on making those video games. Thank you.